Here's Hargreaves, the chance for Torquay! Chris Hargreaves, the captain! If he stays on side, Carlisle checks instead. He's looking for Banyan Sills! So once again, thank you, Yano Army, this week for sending in your replies to our Kelly's Corner today. Uh, so we've got questions for Harry and also thoughts for the Jordan Young signing. Who do we need more? Who and where? So thank you, everyone who has posted in. Uh, so Rachel, evening, Rachel, says we need some gate. Gile Gil in the midfield, front foot forward, attacking mid winger with pace. Uh, hopefully Jordan Young will be that player I think mm. um, Jamie Pike has said Harry why do you call it a throw on and not a throw in throw on instead of throw in I think it's just one of those things I've just naturally done to be perfectly honest at times <laughs> you sort of get stuck with the language that you use and at times at games I do sit there going, going I, I do use that nearly every single game um, so I will bear that in mind going forward <laughs> Rachel was asking if you've got any trade secrets um, and it, do you get mind fog ever when you're commentating uh, all the time I get mind <laughs> fog all the time I, th- I think one of the, the beauties of this level is I try and keep up to date with everything as much as possible always Try and keep up to track with what every single league is doing is the, the key thing for me. I'm in a position where I'm doing talkie most of the time, but I do some stuff with Plymouth Argyle, so I've got to sort of keep up with what's going on in the championship at the same time as um, doing the stuff in the in the National League South and just other leagues in general because you look at when we play games in the FA Trophy or the FA Cup, we could be drawn against the Bishops Cleave, which is a team who will be perfectly honest knew nothing about before um, going into it. FA Trophy. I know we've been drawn home at, uh, against Truro, so it's not so much. Well, Paul Water knows Truro, um, and we all know a little bit about Truro City. But when it could be, it could be drawn against Hendon, for example. Always try and keep a little bit of an eye on what they're sort of doing, so that when you're going into that game, you sort of have a bit of a familiarisation with what Hendon are doing. Uh, I think a big trade secret, really, for me, would be always talk to people. Always become friendly with people because you never know who the next contact you're going to have meet with um, and it's amazing how many times you see these people because the game I did last Wednesday the two guys who helped me get into position where I am now were also at the game and it's one of these it's, it's, a, it's quite a nice moment where you get to see these people again and kind of go yeah you saw me when I was at Wickham Sound doing um, Risborough Rangers versus Amphill Town but now I'm here doing Plymouth Argyle versus Millwall or uh, got to work on um, obviously the, the, the playoff final at Bristol which I won't say anymore on um, and as well at like the rugby premiership final when Chiefs got there a few years back so always keep on talking uh, mm. to people because that's the that, that's always always the best way um, uh, was there anything more to that question I was trying to talk talk as well yeah and talk talk yeah um, brain, <laughs> yeah brain, 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 brain fog all the time because at times you're watching a game you're trying to tactically watch it but tell the listener at home what's going on because when you're doing radio you're describing everything that you're mm. seeing to a listener um they could i always have this sort of in mind i'm talking to just one person at home who may not be able to get out of the house but absolutely loves listening to talk united on the radio um because my grandparents are a little bit like that with watford they listen to free counties all the time because they want to know what's going on watford and always tuned in um to the sports show on three counties so i've always treated it as uh, as that um but yeah you get fuck all the time yeah. you call one player the wrong name all the time i will call jordan dyer and sam Dreyer the wrong name all season long i can guarantee you because the names are so similar and they're both play at center back so there will be at some points where i go can Dreyer just put the captain's armband on so i definitely know it's him yeah. where he's on the other side of the pitch to, <laughs> to where i can see as well finn tonks wearing a shirt without a number on which was quite useful uh, yeah. useful as, as well in the second half in- First off on Saturday. You can probably get away with it a little bit, can't you? I know I know you wouldn't want to, but um No. You know, you no, nobody's watching at the same time as listening to you, really, are they? Uh yeah. especially especially with talkie games, no. But then at the same time, you, you want to give the game the best account that you can possibly do. And the worst thing you do, and I've I've done it once or twice before, said the wrong name when when the goal goes in. Mm. And obviously BBC Devin clip up all the clips so they can play it out the final hour and they'll use it to preview the game sort of thing 
And you never want to see on the score sheet going, oh, it was Cody Cook who scored, but I said in commentary it was Brad Ash. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think I, you're probably selling yourself short because I think I think that is a really difficult job. It's I mean, I, just just mm-hmm. when I've sat trying to sort of tweet um, yes. to actually get the accuracy, because you only see it once, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I, I, I see it as well with tweeting because I, I used to work for Reading Women, part of their media team, and tweeting live, you had oh, to ask everybody wow. all the time what was going on because at times you, you, you're tweeting one thing, you're having to look up and... Yeah, I did, I've, yeah, I've done talky talks a couple of times. I've struggled. I've struggled, yeah. I've I struggled yeah. to be honest. I, yeah. I did it for the first game of the season, actually. I got the goal score wrong. I said it was Ash, and it was uh, especially on your own team, you get too excited. Yeah, yeah. well, this is this is what made me laugh at the beginning of the season. I did our goals friendly away at Milton Keynes, and our goal, I think they made five changes because it was just pre season friendly. So, all of us in the press box are all noting down these five changes. Our goal then score, and nobody's seen it. So we're all kind of going, I presume the goalkeeper's played a short pass, Hardy's just picked it up and scored. Because we're all looking at the, co- in the best box going, did you see it? No, we're writing down the substitutions. Nightmare. <laughs> I suppose at least at this level now, it's not like when it was when we were in it for the first time back in 2018 where they had no names on the back of the shirts. All, all the clubs had just numbers. At least now I'd yeah. say about 90% do have the names, which is quite Yeah, because uh, when you spoke to Paul Mulhern during that period, it was only... Um, basically recording the attacking moments and, and the goals until we got to the Woking game, which was the first game I think we did comment. Oh, well, I did commentary on that season. It was my first game with Martin Gritton, which it seems to be quite a good partnership um, since that day. Was that the 3-3 three, three game? It was yeah, a 3-3 three, three game. game. Oh, wow. Oh, good game. Yeah, that was our first game together, which was, yeah, a, a fantastic game. But at, at that point, towards the end of the season... The Torquay team didn't really change mm. that often. It was the, the same 18 core players. You knew exactly what boots they were wearing. That You knew exactly what sort of shirt they'd be wearing. So that was, it was just picking up the opposition team, which was where it came a little bit more tricky. But after a while, you know, these players like the back of your hand, you're going to go, mm. yeah. oh, so-and-so was at Welling and Dartford. Now he's playing for Maidstone. This bloke, he's, he was at Yeovil and now he's down at Weston. And... Yeah, you start to track players around. Yeah, no, totally with you. Love it. Um, on to the other there's quite a few more so uh, Olida Dom uh, has said can you ask Harry what has been his most embarrassing moment on commentary <laughs> and he just wants to say on Jordan terrific signings ticks all the boxes would like a midfielder as we look light in that area with a busy run of games coming up and Freckeld has been struggling at the moment Um, to the question I think that might, is that in any sort of relation to Saturday where they handed back to me and I didn't realise they handed back to me and I put the headphones oh. on and I'm going uh the studio's gone. Have I disconnected? <laughs> so then I get down the air going, no, you're live. Um, which, <laughs> which, which, uh, yeah, that, that was uh, one of those ones going, okay, uh, welcome back. Um, something very similar happened during the pandemic. Um, obviously I was very fortunate to be able to go to ground, especially the season it was um, to watch what was the best talk eating we've seen in, in years in the sense of quality on the pitch playing and it was on a Tuesday night at Aldershot and I've got Martin oh, with me. Was that the full um, one or something? Yes, it was a full oh, one. incredible, weren't they? They he were was incredible. Fun. That Whitfield um, go, I think. Oh, yes. Yeah, what yeah. a team, And, man. and it, there was, there was somebody replied to my tweet when I got to the ground saying, I would absolutely love your job and it made me feel more, how much more lucky I am to be in the position mm. that I am that I'm watching a fantastic football club which has meant so much to me now um, watching, watching this team. So, we got to half time and I needed to go to the loo. And I said to Martin, look, we're off the air. I'm going to run to the loo. And I said, yeah, that's absolutely fine. I'm just looking at my phone, just looking at social media, looking at the other scores. I then get back into the stand to Martin's and going, get back, get back, get back. So I'm getting back. I put the cans on going, hello, is anything anything wrong? And they're going, yeah, half time report, Harry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm scrambling for my papers going, Right, half time. Talk United. I forgot what the half time score was at that point, but no, that that made me laugh because I just got got completely caught up um, with it during games. Uh, there must have been referee slips at some point and referee being hit with the ball at some point. But that's the sort of the key one for me is all the shot away during the during pandemic kind of game. <laughs> ah, <I'm, laughs> half time. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, tough. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> um, Lee Cross uh, says it's always a gamble having to start from scratch with a new squad, but the defense is solid. Uh, but we've struggled with goals, and I think Young is a superb signing. However, we do need to strengthen in the central midfield who can more link the defense to the attack. Yeah, I think we're still a couple of players short, aren't we? Really, mm, but, we're two um, players short now. It's it's good to see that you know the signings are you know got the first mm. signing in, so hopefully a few more might not be too far away. Um, we've got Ollie who says. Um, there was a post uh, made yesterday by Chelmsford account um, about how part-time clubs can compete against full-time clubs like us with the amount, you know, the money and stuff that we're putting in and spending on players. Um, Half the player budget of last season. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, well, do you want to take this uh, on, mate? <laughs> uh, I, I can if you want me out. I know. Oh, so, so I don't want to start war with anyone because I do get um, a point from an outsider. I do I get a point. Yeah. I, uh, honestly, I can't. I, to be brutally honest, I can't be bothered with it. I don't. I don't no. really care what fans of Chelmsford think about Torquay United. But if if you know to engage with the point, football ever since it started has always been about money, and generally the mm. teams who spend most money finish higher up the division, and that's just a fact of life. Um, when when you've been when you've spent most of your life watching Torquay bounce around between like 80th and 92nd of the Football League because we haven't got any money. Um, you know, if we get the chance to, you know, be slightly more competitive um, for a while, I'm all for it. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't care mm -hmm. that we're, we're outgunning part-time teams. I mean, you know, not that we are particularly. Because we're getting, we're losing just, to themselves, just, so... It's yeah. a fact of life. Sorry. Yeah. And and as Joe said in the response to that, there's some good responses that I'm never here to start some sort of war. But it's um it is you know we're supposed at forty percent of our turnover. The club's been run sustainably now. Um, we've got the attendances. Yes, those attendances didn't stop us before. I agree with that point as well. But it's just about how the club's been run now. Um, I do. I do also agree. But it's sad. It's just a fact. We've not been reckless with it. You know, and as Clive said, we've got half the playing budget of last season. And what well, we came 18th last season. So, yeah, no, I get Talk. it. But I do, it's just how football works. At the end of the day, as Clive, that was a brilliant point. If we end up back where we are, it's like food chain, isn't it? You end up mm. back where we you know, aim to be, you know, like higher National League, lower, well, we want to be in the Football League, you know what I mean? Higher National League or lower Football League, then we won't be the big money spenders then. You know, we we're trying to get oh. the National League and we were stuck with Wrexham and all that. Uh, and exactly country. right. It's a exactly food chain. Right. It's a food chain in football. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can call that financial doping or you can just call it bad luck, you know, but yeah, we, there's no way we were going to get past. It's more of the money. It's more than money. It's more than money. Not it was never going to happen. Mm -hmm. All I'll say is talk United of 2024, 20, 25 season. is a completely different football club to the one of 23, 24. And, you know, it's just it's just great now that we've got people who care about the club, who have only got the club's best interest at heart, who are supporters. And you just look around and all the work that's already gone on at Playmore and to the playing budget. I mean, we're only budgeted for 2,400 anyway, aren't we? So and with the Yellow Army, you know, share scheme and everything else and all the funds generated. Yes, I know it's a one time sort of thing on that mm. respect, but the money's been spent sensibly and, you know, we are investing for a club in the that hopefully club. will be back in the Football League soon. Yeah, they're proving the football club on all levels as well. So there's income coming in out everywhere through community work and all those sort of facilities around that. So it's only just a start, to be fair. Um, but still, yeah, no, I agree with the point. Everyone's allowed their opinion. That's the beauty of football. Absolutely. As long as um, everyone's respectful. Mel Bayer says, hi, Harry. Any moments when an interview has turned sour? Thinking of that uh, Roy Hodgson interview. <laughs> uh, I've seen it on the rounds on YouTube. I can't repeat and, um, it. I can't repeat it. Can't it wasn't me, by the way. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, I know. But, uh, um, and have um, have you somehow salvaged the moment without having to edit uh, post-recording? Uh, I never edit any recordings I've done, apart from probably up and tailing it, really. Um <sighs> It, at times, it's always hard to judge a, a character. At times, depending on after a game, especially there's a lot of adrenaline in them as well. There, there is. It's a, there's yeah. a lot of hate yeah. of the moment um, in things, and when you hear it's taken a manager ages to get out of the dressing room and whatever, I don't. I'm not sure if it's completely like that. I think at times maybe they're they're sitting there thinking, "What am I going to say here from this game?" Because obviously, 
they, they'll have a fan base out there who'll be wanting to know their reaction and so again could be win loss or draw um and with, with the interview turning sour they can they can turn sour um you at times you have to word your questions in a certain way because you want you want to you're not there to criticize a manager all the time because we, we especially being BBC Radio Devon, you're there for Torquay, you're there wanting to see Torquay win. That's that's what the fan base are wanting at the end of the day. So when you're asking these questions to the managers, it's because it's the fans' interest. It's we we're not sitting here wanting to slate you whatsoever. We just want to know why didn't that work today? Why didn't this work today? Um so yeah, they 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 can turn sour, and I think it's just a case of you reading the body language early on, reading the question, uh, reading their answers early on, and trying to make sure that even though you want to ask a question, mm -hmm. you may have to ask it a certain way that it doesn't provoke who you're interviewing, because the last thing you want to do is to really annoy somebody um, with questions, because then it can turn quite sour and just create a horrible atmosphere. That's not what you want, and because you need to interview them next week. Um, yeah, there, so, there unless is. Unless I get sacked, so <laughs> there, yeah. there, there, is, there is that you because I think the big part of my job as well is maintaining a relationship with these people. Yeah. And yeah, I I had what well, had spoken to Gary Owls for a couple eight months or so. Then Gary Johnson, obviously the first season that Gary Johnson lost, I think I saw him lose two or three games. It must have been that that first season. One of those was Bournemouth Wood in the trophy. One was Bath and there must have been an, another one along Running. the way. So yeah, probably yeah, probably was one. Yeah. Um so for that stage is you sort of knew where you lied with your questions going forward on, on that. And then obviously towards the end I don't need to go in, involved in, in how it was at the end sort of thing. But then with Paul, I'm still getting to know Paul as a person, as a, as a manager, the way he wants to play his football. Um, I know Clive, you go down to the the Thursday um, press conferences, and obviously Paul does a lot of the home games. So he's Paul seeing him most weeks, but for me, I'm still still learning Paul uh, as as a bloke, and I I can't say a bad word about Paul from my experience. He's always got given me the, the time of day, always been very patient with me um, when it comes to interviewing. So it can it these things can turn sour but then as Sam said it is the heat of the moment nobody mm -hmm. likes losing a game of football especially if if your side hasn't shown up that day and you're scratching your head a little bit because I think some managers at the time the last thing they want to do is having somebody putting a microphone yeah, in their face I going hate it. Hey, what went wrong it's be horrible <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean Paul I, I, I really enjoy um, speaking to Paul because it, it, actually off the record as well obviously He's prepared to open up and give maybe a little bit more of an opinion about things, um, but I mean, I I have to I have to say at, um, at at Bishop's Cleave, I mean, the guy looked like he was in shock, didn't he? It must mm. it must have been an awful experience to have to stand there and just like not throw things really, which mm. which he did do when we conceded our second, didn't he? <laughs> Saturday, I, yeah, I I do feel for the managers a bit. I, it's it's a lot calmer midweek, you know, in a press mm. conference, sat in a nice, warm, you know, sp spacious sort of bar area or whatever it yeah. is. It's a lot calmer and a lot more considered. He does think about his answers. He, yeah, he, you know, you can really tell. Uh, just a few more from Facebook then. So Ross Warner says, a great signing and an exciting duo up front with Cook. Needs some pace on the wings and someone to challenge Hammond rather than replace him. Even though he's been shaky, he's also been reliable too. Yeah. Need pacey wins and Palmer back soon too. Martin Danby says, another front man and goalkeeper. And to emphasise on your comment to Craig, a big well done to Torquay on this signing. A three-year deal and cash paid for him. Does it really matter the cost? Not really. Just happy that the club is going forward. And finally, Stephen Badcott says, it looks a promising signing and we certainly need further reinforcements up front. The only slight nagging doubt about the lengthy contract is that the view of Yeovil fans seems to be that he struggled at National League level. And as with a lot of our team, they are good enough for National League South, but probably not the National League. Hopefully that this isn't the case with Young and I'm sure the aim is to be promoted before 2027. However, I think he's had a longish contract at Yeovil, so we've probably had to honour that. Otherwise, he wouldn't have moved, so fair enough. I still think we need further signings up front as Ash and Seymour aren't looking the part at the moment. If Cook was to be injured or suspended for any considerable time, we'd be in trouble as hoofball to Ash and Seymour would be pointless. 
So Hi, that's Steve. everything. <laughs> I know so Steve that is from all years the com- all the comments. So thank you once again to everyone who has posted in this week uh, and making a very long Kelly's corner for me. So thank you. <laughs> Harry, can I quickly ask about, um, because on Saturday I saw a few comments after um, Mm. the defeat that a few people felt Watton was a bit short in his responses. Did you get that vibe or? Uh, Yeah, again, I think he was very frustrated because I think he said said about four or five players didn't do what he wanted. Mm. That that frustrated him with it. Now, one thing, I've never played football at a high level. The most I've done is play for my school and I scored an own goal and never played again. Um, so my my experience of actually playing on the pitch is going to be something completely different to what what Paul's experience of playing on, on the pitch. And I think that I've interviewed him after the Farnborough defeat and that game, it was just a penalty in it. And it was a penalty. Uh, and I think it was one of those days at the end of the day going, well, we were good enough for the point at the end, end of the day. It just didn't, didn't work out. Welling, obviously, there was the refereeing decision, um, which ruled out the goal. And Torquay just didn't pick up from that game. This was the first time I just felt Torquay never got going in a game. Mm. Um, and, of course, he it's his tactics that he's put forward. He's gonna He's always going to defend his players all the time. And I I have no criticism at all of him defending his players in that situation. So understandably, he can get short because he's lost a game. I don't think (laughs) no manager wants wants to lose a game. But no. Yeah. I totally agree. Um, uh, Ramon Golzario says, favourite player and manager you've ever interviewed and worst ground for commentary box? (laughs) Um, I'll go for the the bottom, uh, the last question uh, first. Obviously, doing Torquay for the last few years where you're not in football league grounds, where you're in non-league grounds, uh, part of me does really enjoy the sort of Bishops, Cleve, Limington type games because not only am I a commentator, but I'm also very technically minded and absolutely love when you get a new beer kit, going, oh, how can I use this new beer kit? Um, sh- no disrespect to Scholing, but when we played them in the FA Cup during that season where uh, only home fans were allowed in, a couple um, away did sneak in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a couple and away. Charlie Baker at the end. <laughs> yeah, Char- Charlie got in. Um, uh, the chairman of Sholing was a Torquay fan, so he managed to get in. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> and the, the only way I can describe it, it must have been the shed where they kept the the equipment for the grounds, uh, grounds equipment. They put that us in that, and it was behind the goal. Oh. And during the game, somebody had an umbrella up. So we've got this mate with an umbrella. And it's like a golfing umbrella, not like a cheap. And it's a social distance. So you can't sense a move. I, I, I don't think there's so much social distance. <laughs> this isn't going on at that point. But my overriding memory from that game was Matey's umbrella blew inside out, and he just started whacking on the side and threw it into the bin. Um, apart from, as well from Josh Umera scoring from about forty yards, me being one of five talk United people watching Umera score from 40 yards that day. But that's with all the respect to Sheldon, because they were a fantastic club and were fantastic that day. Uh, that one's probably, I would call it the most interesting uh, commentary box I've done. Um, favorite player. I had to think about this one quite long and hard. Um, Farrah Williams was probably one of the best ones. I had to interview. She was playing at Reading at, when I was working there. Obviously, being such an iconic player for the women's game before, even before the women's game, getting as big as it is now, she was such a trailblazer, and getting to speak to her was just fantastic experience to go with, um, into Farrah Williams. Uh, and managers, I would probably say Gareth Ainsworth, um, when I was at Wickham Sound initially oh, wow. before joining BBC Devon, uh, we used to do the press conferences at Wickham each week. Uh, and speaking to Gareth Ainsworth, he would just give you the time of day, he would absolutely mm-hmm. happily ask in answer any question and such a fantastic bloke to meet and to talk to so I had, I had no faults there so yeah Gareth Ainsworth for that one you can just tell what some people can't you yeah, from outside yeah. this point yeah he's always I've always had so much respect for him very interesting uh Harry you can breathe now that's all the questions <laughs> for you so just a couple of more uh to read out so Oma Musa hype fan says Jordan Young is a great signing shows real intent from the ownership creative pacey with an eye for goal I'd like to see us invest in a backup fullback for Carson. Hate to say it, but one striker needs to be let go for a more prolific forward to get a scoring. 
There's Jamie Cole, who says Young is an unbelievable signing at this level. Great ambition by the Bryn Consortium. Yeovil fans have been saying he got caught out in the National League because he's so one-footed. Should Watton use that to our advantage and play him to his strengths or try and work on that weaker foot? Both. Both, I think. And finally, Craig Hughes says, Jordan Young, what a signing. A player who knows this level and is very talented. It's good to see the club acquiring this type of player and to sign him until May 2027 just shows that the club are protecting themselves if a league side were to make a bid for him in the future. Under the old regime, there would be none of this and decent players will be gone for peanuts. A massive well done to all involved at the club, the Brink Consortium, Watson, and I'm sure Neil Warnock was involved in this amazing deal somewhere. As for more additions to the squad, I think that we still need another striker, another potential target man in case Cook picks up an injury or picks up a suspension, as I feel Ash and Seymour would struggle together. Paul Watton's yellow army and a lovely little yellow heart to finish there. So thank you very much, oh, everyone. A very long Kelly's Corner. Harry, I've got one question actually mm -hmm. for myself, if you don't mind. Yeah, and it's one. one I've asked before to a couple of our other guests. Um, what does Talkie United mean to you? Obviously, we've been through a lot as a football yeah. club in the last 18 months. Uh, what does Talkie mean to you, mate? For, for me, I think most young boys and girls have the ambition of playing football professionally. Um, I did it. I did have that as a kid and then slowly realised I'm awful at football. And whenever we used to play football in PE at school, I used to go in goal because I could touch the ball if I went in goal. Because if I was that <laughs> yeah. and I was actually not too bad in goal, actually. Also, would have picked you, I reckon. <laughs> um, and I know I cannot pick that far whatsoever. Um, so being a commentator for me was sort of like, ah, that's my way into football because mm. I'm never going to coach, I'm never going to play as a footballer, I'm never going to do it. And I thought, well, commentating is because. As my brother and my family will attest to, I will commentate when I was playing FIFA when I was younger, and I still uh, sort of do yeah. now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that was sort of, um, for me, was like, ah, that's that's my way into football. And went to Wickham Sound for a few years, um, did games at Wickham, did games at Maidenhead, did games at Chesham as well. And one thing sort of led to other, and then an opportunity to commentate on Torquay came up. And I thought, oh, you know what? That might be my way in here. Um, now, Torquay already meant something a little bit to me that my first ever game watching live professional football was Wickham versus Torquay in 2006. So I've sort of had some a little bit of soft spot for Torquay. And then obviously watching Soccer AM growing up, you, you knew Soccer AM from Helen Chamberlain. What an episode that was, by the way. Um so the opportunity there to come up and then it was Maidenhead, which is my first game. And I felt kind of felt quite comfortable because I'd watched Maidenhead a few times before. So I knew who their players were. It was just knowing who Torquay's players were. And from that, I think it was almost like an instant. Yeah, this this club's different. This club is something that I quite like. Yes, it sort of helps also play in yellow like my own team do. Um, but from there, Torquay United let me live a dream which I never thought could have become a reality when I started doing football commentary because I thought I'll do it as a volunteer and then I had to go and get a proper job and leave football aside. But Torquay have given me some fantastic memories. It's made me absolutely fall in love with the club, with the place itself. I always try and convince my missus once a year to at least come down for one game, um, which I'm aiming to do in April uh, this year when Chesham go down, bit of the, an easy one for me to pick, that one. Um, but yeah, Torquay to me are a team which have allowed me to live my dream of talking about football and being on on the radio. And yeah, it's just a club which means a lot for me. And the stuff last year um, was quite upsetting because in my head, I was kind of going, is this it now? Is the, is the dream of commentating on football over and the whole consortium coming in and, and doing so well with the club? It's made giving me a lift now, and I, just, I would sort of say, yeah, Torquay's nearly my team as as well now. From mm. um, being there, and I was on the phone to Paul after uh, Paul Mulhern after the game on Saturday, and we're kind of going, it's sort of weird how we've got no blood relation to Torquay whatsoever. He's from Scotland, I'm from Buckinghamshire, but we both feel Torquay's massively a part of our lives, and mm. wouldn't change it for anything. 
No, well, you, you're I. both a big part of the club. Yeah, you know, you are. You've done um, so well, both of you. It's, it's massive, yeah. really, the radio for a lot of people. Mm, so, it is. You know, it is. And it always and will I, be. Always and I, 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 always, I always, always think that, like going back to what I was saying about my grandparents listening to Free Counties, um, knowing what's going on with Watford, there'll be plenty of people in Devon who use BBC Radio Devon Sport as their way to know what's going with Torquay because mm. they may not able to be, especially the, the world we live in today where, um, Clive, I know you're lucky enough to do away nearly every single away game. I know Tom does quite a few of the away games when he when he can do, but to travel to all these away games all the time is is not easy on the pocket whatsoever. You, that's yeah, you just think for about mental health as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so when you when you when you've got all the travelling, especially what the nearest games Weymouth or Truro, I'm not sure which one ge- geographically, which way which closer sort of thing. Weymouth now. So I think. I think. So you'll be you're you're that in the in the in between person for that person at home who may not be able to go to the game because they can't financially afford it or they can't don't have the time to do it. So I know that I've I want to fill in that void for them. I want to make them feel a part of the game. And I do have some fantastic co-commentators uh, with me all the time who give me so many so many different aspects to to watch the game um, in as well. So yeah, just yeah, it's it's a fantastic job, and I appreciate 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 all the all the love that comes away. Because at times you kind of go, I'm just I'm in my head, I'm talking to one person, mm-hmm. not the, the big audience, which I know the Yellow Army is. When are we getting the salvage Swanee? Uh, oh, kids, that's what I, that's what everyone wants to know. <laughs> when you're doing it away, day, Swanny. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm at Weymouth, <laughs> but I don't oh, know no. at the moment. But yeah, no, definitely that would be a good one. Definitely, I would love to do that. Big one, yeah, because we we have some fantastic co-commentators so many good with us. Um, really yeah, and I, it's such an yeah. honour to be even involved with it. Scientists, it's so oh, such a good team. It, it's a, yeah, as Paul uh, Mahomes uh, says, you know, yeah. it's so well respected, isn't it? Yeah, and it's fantastic to to be a part of. And we have so many fantastic co commentators. We've had mm-hmm. Martin Grit and Damon Laffrey. We've had Danny Stevens. Then you also look at people like Dave Thomas, um, yeah, nice. John Cadogan, who who gives a different angle um, to the way somebody who's watching the club for fifty odd years watching it, and a next professional footballer. Uh, I think got Tom Diamond coming up at Enfield. Yeah, good lad, Tom. Yeah, good I'm lad. Yeah, looking, I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Talk Youth Academy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. great lad, Tom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah, as as it'd be great to do a game with with Sam and uh, me and Paul have done a game before, which was a fun Boxing Day Yeovil where we lost six two. Um, but yeah. hopefully, 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 me and Paul can do another one because we because we talk to each other all the time. Um, mm. And mm. yeah, it's, it's always it's always good good to speak to him because when I'm mostly when I'm up here listening to play more, it's always good to hear Paul's voice and Dave's voice and Sam or him whoever's joining Paul or at, at times Jed as well. Yeah, Jazz yeah. Gray is well known for a lot of years. Um, also, finally, before we forget, actually, mm-hmm. thank you to everyone who came uh, talk about Paul. Thank you for everyone who came along to the Talkie Talk quiz last Friday. Uh, Paul joined me. It was six go, right? I would say hosting a quiz is my biggest strength in life, but um, we, we made it work. What a legend Paul is, and thank you to everyone who came. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, and to the winners, well, to everyone who just took part as well. Hopefully that will be something we can maybe do a bit more often and... Uh, monthly and get a few more people there as well so um yeah thank you very much to everyone who attended that and do we need um, to speak yeah. about tombridge son yeah probably probably should do, i think it's we? traditional to do a preview in it yeah let's go what do we that game tombridge didn't it chelmsford tombridge tombridge who are we playing on saturday what do we know about chelmsford then wow well, Os- Osmond they know Forrest we're massive goals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, oh, it's going to happen, isn't it? It's well, bound to happen. Oh, Os- Osman Foyer down one wing, Calvin Clark down the other. Oh, God. Oh, it's Carl cool there as well. Yeah, yeah God, he'll score a break. Sure, I think, I think great. Carson will sort him out. I think that'll be all right. Oh, God, Clive, you're going to get clipped up, mate. That's fine. That's right. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> More views of you. That's Harry, fine. score prediction. They've got a better oh. athletics track than Horn Church as well. I'll give them that. <laughs> <sighs> and right, enough Chelmsford scored. Yeah. Awesome for real score goals as well. Hopefully not. Right, enough enough Chelmsford from blooming athletics track bashing. Well, how are we going to win on the weekend? How many are we going to win by? I think that Jordan Young will do an Ivy and Williams. I think it'll be a hat trick on debut. It'll be seven or eight nil. I think. 
I'll go okay. two two. I'll Stone go two, silence. Two. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Two two draw, I'm going. Uh I, I think again it'll be another fantastic um turnout and that's something which sort of blow my mind the attendances are playing more and I, I'm so looking forward to going down and seeing how much the club's changed as I last went because the last game I went to was the 1-0 win over Dover where McGavin did oh, what McGavin does and scored you're in, for a, you're in for a treat mate at the club it's just it's amazing it's especially in hospitality different, mate like makes you <laughs> proud makes yeah. you proud come and see yeah. us mate it's good yeah definitely yeah. definitely, definitely. Yeah. you know um so yeah, I'm looking forward to coming down and hopefully with another fantastic attendance. Uh, I'm gonna say two one Torquay, but either Foyer or Kalala will score. Chelsea, yeah, they, no, they've struggled, haven't they? To start, they've picked up a little bit now, but um, the, the games against us tend to be quite high scoring in general. Um, I'm gonna go for a very entertaining three two Torquay win. And for any Chelmsford fans watching, the views of Clive Hayward do not uh, <laughs> represent the entirety of Talky Talk. So uh, if you do win, please, it's Clive you want, not the rest <laughs> of think, us, so. think you'll find I'm the voice of the pop side. And uh, yeah, let's make it hard for him. Come on. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's... let's have fun. It's what it was yeah. about. Fun. Let's, let's make on. it a fortress. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Right. Well, so there we go. Thank you for Tom and Clive as ever. And we'll see you next week. Um, it's time to end this week. Thank you so much for tuning in to both of these parts um, and for all the support. And yeah, it's great. I love it. It's great stuff. Thank you, Harry, for joining us this week. Brilliant no as ever. Um, I'm off to study my fixture list now. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Here's Hargreaves, chance for talking. Chris Hargreaves, the captain. He stays on side. Carlisle checks instead. He's looking for Bennett. Sell!